I think it's always important to acknowledge people that you really, really appreciate in your life. You should do it all the time. Let them know. Give them reminders that you appreciate what they do. Um, that's why I always tell y'all thank you for supporting the way that y'all do. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for hanging around. Thank you for being willing to give us time uh, in your life like every single day. I appreciate that a lot. Um, now, a special shout out. To the newest team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Big Reg. Thank you for being willing to do that. But another special shout out to my guy, Authentics Only 22. And y'all can hit him up on Instagram, Authentics Only 22. Now, y'all know this is uh, this Be More Like Us. This is one of my favorite hoodies that, that we have. I mean, y'all see me wear it. I, I wear it on special occasions. But my guy, Authentics Only 22, he said, you know what? Let's take it up a notch. Because he sent. These, ooh, these, these things are pretty, boy. They are pretty. These, these white, purple Jordans. Um, so, and, and I'm like, man, I'm like, okay, where these? They like they go together so good, man. But shout out to my guy. And then of course we go wear them with the Ravens away jerseys too. So I, I really, really appreciate it. That so shout out to Authentics Only Twenty Two. Y'all go follow him on Instagram. Hit him up if you need some shoes or something. Because he had been telling me about that. He said he had those for me since, like, before the Jacksonville game. He didn't tell me what it was. But he said, hey, I got something for you. He'd be like, he been letting me know about it. But um, he, he did send them out. So I, I appreciate that a whole lot, man. You know, I appreciate you. I rock with you, man. And y'all, again, y'all go check him out for real, man. That was just uh, that was a nice little surprise, man, uh, that he sent to the P.O. box. So, Anyway, uh, we got an episode of questions from subscribers to get into. Without further ado, let's do it. On the bright side, first question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy JL. He said, I know the flock has been in shambles the past week over a ton of different things regarding the team. I wanted to take some time to look on the bright side of things. Okay, I like that. Let's put a positive spin on some things that have been a little bit rough. He said, uh, we have seen the Ravens this season and last year be able to compete with any team. That's true. Ravens been able to rock with anybody. Their biggest problem has been just finishing. But they've they shown that they can rock and they can mess with anybody. But anyway, um, he said, with a player like Lamar and an injury like a sprained PCL, the team is going to need Lamar back at 100% so that he is able to make magic happen. Ah, ha, ha. And that's that is true, but it's you, you, you hope this is another reason why I wanted them to build around him more over the past five years. But I mean, hey, we're here now. But this is why I hope that they would do that, because and hopefully moving forward, I know it may only be two games because it ain't looking like he's going to play against Atlanta. Uh, it may only be one game if he doesn't play against the Steelers. It, we'll see if he plays against the Bengals. But um, I would hope that the Ravens would try to use other guys in different ways to sort of take some off of Lamar. Um, I mean, as a quarterback, a lot is going to be on you because you touch the ball like every single play. Um, so you got to hand the ball off. You got to snap the ball. You got to throw it to the receivers and whatnot. But um, I, I would love if they could take some off of him so he doesn't have to always be Superman all the time. Um, and there have been games where he hasn't had to be Superman sometimes, but they come far and few. But anyway, um, he said, uh, I seen that he posted on his Instagram story that he had on training shoes, with let, with let, ah, which let me know he is definitely in the weight room rehabbing. I guarantee the thing behind this could be why rush Lamar back against the Falcons team with a rookie at quarterback when it is likely that you can clinch a playoff spot even with a loss. Here's the situation. Your defense has been giving up 13 points a game since the Roquan trade. You have the greatest kicker of all time. Your running game is picking up. And last but not least, Superman is on his way home. Mm. Here is a recipe for playoff success. Use that run game to open up play action with Deshaun Jackson over the top. Oh, see, you, you know what? That's funny. You, you say something that's so simple. You, you say something that just makes so much sense. Use that running game. Help let it set up the play action and whatnot. Use your speed receiver on the outside. Let them go deep and whatnot. Makes sense. But you see, this is why there were so many frustrations at the Browns game. Because the Ravens went away from what made sense. They went in the opposite direction of what made sense. And it didn't make sense. So we hear what you're saying. We love what you're saying. But the Ravens, they may not do what you're saying. But anyway, uh, he said, uh, use that run game to open up the play action with Deshaun Jackson over the top. Mark Andrews, man in the middle. While Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson take care of the short and intermediate route concepts to hopefully 
get first downs. I'm not saying it'll work. I'm saying if there is anyone who can, it's Lamar Jackson. Thank you. And what are your thoughts on salvaging the season? See, you, you don't even got to say salvaging the season because they're 9-5. Nine, they're 9-5. Nine and five. They're nine and, five. and big opportunity this Saturday against the Falcons to go 10-5. and five. Um, And that would pretty much locked him up for the playoffs but i mean we won't know officially till we know but again like i said before ravens have to do more work not to make the playoffs than they do to make the playoffs um but yeah as far as uh if not not even just salvaging the season but as far as you're gonna really make some noise in the playoffs um offense gotta get it rolling defense gotta do their thing too uh you gotta play complimentary football uh, and i will say just really make stuff easier for everybody Make stuff easier and don't overcomplicate things for yourself. Don't overthink things that you have. You, you've shown you, you do a lot of overthinking. You do a whole lot of overthinking. Um, but if they could just relax, take it easy and just chill out, then I think things could be so much better, so much more efficient, so much smoother, so much more effective. Uh, if they would stop trying to outsmart themselves, then this Ravens team Especially with the offense, they could do much better. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patron, my guy, Kendrick. He said, hey, Engraven, what if the Ravens are saving Lamar for the playoffs? Like you said in your last video, it would be harder for them to miss the playoffs than get in. Uh, even if it's a wild card, the Ravens hit their stride at the right time. That would be crazy. Ooh, I, I remember that. And hey, Lamar, I've been saying Lamar is a man of his word. Uh, he said that we don't want to peak too early. <laughs> <laughs> he sure ain't peaked too early yet, especially on offense. But if they were saving for the playoffs, I mean, I, I again with, with that video, I just I just wonder what the severity of the injury is. I wonder what it really is. Um, and we'll see. I mean, we won't know till we know if they save him for the playoffs. I mean, I think it would be better for him to come in like as soon as he could if he's healthy, uh, so they can get back into more of a rhythm sooner. Um, but if he's healthy before the playoffs, I say play him. If he's not healthy until the playoffs, then I say play him then. Whenever he's healthy, uh, as soon as he's healthy, yeah, they, they, they need Lamar back, and they need him bad. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patreon, my guy Gareth. He said, hey, Graven, hope you and your family are doing well. Do you think with us picking up Sammy Watkins, do you think we have enough to make a run in the playoffs? I'm worried about the wide receiver room, but there's always a chance they could possibly make some noise in the postseason. I will always value your opinion. Uh, thanks for reading my question, Graven. Peace and blessings to you and the whole team. Keep it clean. Love you, bro. Appreciate that, Gareth. Um, I, do I do think they have enough to make a run in the playoffs? Yeah. I'll, mm. So they had Sammy Watkins, Demarcus Robinson, uh, James Prochet, Deshaun Jackson, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, um, uh, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. The offensive line uh, has been better, especially with run blocking, if, especially Ronnie Stanley's out there. Um, so they, I think they can make some noise in the playoffs. I, I think with what they have and with their style of offense um, and their coaching um, – and their personnel, too. I think that if they were to make some noise in the playoffs, I think things would have to really be perfect, especially the passing game, especially the passing game, because that's where there are so many limited opportunities. But at the same time, in the playoffs, you know, like it, whoever the Ravens end up playing, it, as long as they make it there, they should make it there. But as long as they make it there, whoever they end up playing, you know, wh whatever team that is, they are going to do everything in their power to try to stop the Ravens from running. Will they be successful? We'll see. But they're going to do everything in their power to stop the try to stop the Ravens from running. So Ravens need to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. That's, that's been our motto this whole before the season even started. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So if Ravens could be ready in the passing game, um, then that would be if they could just. If, so if, if teams take away their plan A, do you have a plan B? Can you execute a plan B? That, that would be the biggest thing that I think um, would be between them being one and done or versus them making a, a nice little run. Uh, will they have plan B ready just in case plan A isn't successful? The next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, which number eight jersey should I expect to buy next year? 49ers, Jets, Saints, or Lions? What's up, Engraven? Keep up the great work, my dude. Appreciate you, Joshua. Uh, in the likely assumption that Lamar is going next year to a better offensive team, which spot do you think he'll realistically land? 49ers, Jets, Saints, or Lions, or somewhere else? Um, I think Jets is a possibility. Saints, ah... Uh, 
I think it's possible because they they be reworking a bunch of contracts all the time and pushing money down the road. So they they they, they always a, a possibility. 49ers, I don't think that they would. Uh, he, ooh, it, mm, I think he would go crazy there, but I don't think they would because they gave up so much to get Trey Lance. Um, boy, that, he would he would go crazy there though. Um, and he said, I know it's early, but I need to start thinking of jerseys now. Don't worry. I'll still be rooting for the Ravens for them to land a top. <laughs> he said, for them to land a top five draft pick uh, in 2024. But I need my boy Lamar to get his Super Bowl with a front office that cares next year. Oof. That's, that's something right there. It's, man. Mm, I think so many Ravens fans, are, they, 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 they just see it happening. Where they they don't think he's gonna be here anymore after this year. They see the writing on the wall. They see the, some propaganda that's been being pushed as well. Um, they see it. They see it. Uh, we hope that it doesn't happen. But I mean, it, it pretty much is. It's looking like it. But we won't know till we know. So till then, you just gotta be patient. Wait it out. But yeah, he wherever Lamar ends up, whether he ends up staying with the Ravens or ends up going somewhere else, um, I just hope it's somewhere that. Is really gonna. I hope wherever he ends up, they really, really do value him like he should be valued and should have been valued. Oh man, I forgot to do the intro. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. So Tim, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Question from Subs, where you can ask any NFL question you want to, and we answer in a video like this for the patrons. Patrons, you send your question directly on Patreon. You do not need to send it via email, but for everybody else, uh, you can send your question to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. If you ever want to send something to the P.O. box, that is down below in the description. Any ways to support the channel, really. Everything is down below in the description. We got some great questions that we already had, and we got some questions that we have coming up. Let's get into the next one that came from my guy, Julius. He said, what's up, Engraven? Philosophical failure. I'm over here knocking my mic out. He said, Yo, what's up, Engraven? Wish this email was after a win, but hey, you and I and, ever, and several other subs have discussed the same problems over and over again. John, John, John. His philosophy is to do whatever his buddies want to do. Mike McDonald, Giro, both bring their game plans to Harbaugh. He approves every game plan beforehand, so who should really be held accountable? Boom. Uh, imagine teaming up with Kubiak or Peyton with Giro and Mike McDonald. It's more business than friendships, and they would either shape up or ship out. Ain't no three to four years of bluffing and no results. You feel me? Then EDC not stepping to John, like, either you get this team together or you get your desk together. Well, actually, he will, wouldn't he be taking his desk apart or well, getting his stuff together on his desk? Anyway, he said, EDC looks at John with all this belief and hopes for him to bring the Ravens back anew, but shaking my head, sad to watch. Crazy thing is, maybe Lamar would have signed the $180 million guaranteed contract and Hollywood would have stayed, but they wanted Giro gone in order for that to happen. But the Ravens kept him, so Lamar said, no, I need the full $250 million and Hollywood left. Remember, Lamar was surprised when he left, maybe because he thought the Ravens would part ways with Giro instead. Maybe Lamar's not betting on himself, maybe betting against the Ravens like nobody can win with Giro, no matter who is under center, no matter what scheme he comes up with, no matter how many tight ends, no matter how many veteran wide receivers you bring in to run Giro's routes, no matter how many heads Says he replaced, you're not winning. Huntley probably texts Lamar after the game, like, even I need 250 M's after running this game plan. For John to excuse it and use his leverage to blind EDC is just driving us fans insane. Oof. And again, so that's what I've been saying. Yeah, G Ro, not the best offensive coordinator in the world. Okay, cool. Yeah. G Ro got a scheme. G Ro offense is that third. But I just need to be looking at John Harbaugh. Man, listen. Next question came from my guy, Evan. He said, Angry Evan, thank you for all your content and consistency. I hope all is well with you and your family and is in good health. Appreciate that, Evan. Thank you. Uh, man, listen, I genuinely believe that we are not a playoff team and most likely won't be anytime soon. You said this on countless occasions. Us fans have said it. Analysts and former players, too. We need to change our philosophy. We've become way too one-dimensional and heavily relying on a run game for far too long. Bully ball is great, but it's purely situational. It isn't the early 2000s anymore. It isn't even 2010, and it definitely isn't 2019. The run game just isn't enough. Uh, the game is ever evolving and changing as the years go by i fear that we have just we have yet to keep up with the times i agree uh we do not have a balanced offense at all yes every team has their strength whether it's pass or run game but all successful teams have displayed the ability to do both to an extent case in point look at dallas right now look at buffalo look at cincy look at minnesota what do all three of these teams have in common 
offensive balance. Literally everything we call is mad predictable. The fact that our defense is based around Lamar's ability to use his legs, oh, excuse me, the fact that our offense is based around Lamar's ability to use his legs is disappointing. The fact that we don't have any weapons to help Snoop when Lamar is out is disappointing. The fact that play calling is lackluster and predictable is mad disappointing. Think of it like this. Gardner Minshew is the backup in Philly. If Jalen Hurts goes down, God forbid, don't want to jinx that man's money. Well, he is out this week. Gardner Minshew is going to be starting. Uh, but anyway, he said Minshew was coming in with a top three receiving core, solid run game, and a defense playing on a contending level. Lamar goes down, and we all have more anxiety attacks than normal when watching. I actually feel like we have less because I feel like the expectations, they lower a lot. But anyway, uh, he said we literally spend money on a championship level defense and have not set up the offense to succeed. I mean, have the staff not recognized the pattern we've displayed since 2019? Strong start until the rest of the league catches on to our repetitive, basic, non-creative play calling. Dog, I've been hoping G-Row this season to get in his bag and cash out. Bro pulled out two pennies, a paper clip, some lint, and hopefully a pen for his letter of resignation. And honestly, Harbaugh needs to go too. Sorry for the long rant. Still bleeding black and purple forever. Now in the gray. Appreciate that. Hey, that's real. He, 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 he brought it all up. The consistent issues, the same stuff we've been talking about, um, the, the issues with the offense, but he ended it all with pointing to the top. Lamar's greatness is his worst enemy. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, I ain't great when the team keep it clean. Hope you and the fam are doing well. Well, where to start? Firstly, how long was, has Duvernay been hurt for? You can't tell me that Duvernay from the first handful of weeks and now are the same player. But on to my topic, Lamar has made Baltimore kill him. You can say what you want about Huntley or passing accuracy or whatever else you want to crit critique him for. But when Lamar has been healthy, besides his first year being thrown into the deep end midseason, we have reached the second round of playoffs. Unfortunately, Lamar's greatness, however, has now caused problem after problem. What I mean is the best receiver he had he has had was in Hollywood although they had a great connection his best receiver was really sneeze uh, because of the type of receiver he fits Lamar's play style QB friendly and fighting for yards Lamar was in a pro style passing offense coming out of college who scouted him uh, because you can't tell me you what you saw in college and what you have provided him is the same quarterback mm. uh, additionally for everyone saying he doesn't deserve a potentially crippling contract on the team even though you can have things work if you want if you want it enough uh, when Lamar stops being the leader leading rusher on the team then I'll agree. For now, he is Baltimore's offense with talent around him that doesn't match the standard. His attitude, demeanor, belief in himself, his humbleness and respectfulness, and his willingness to win are all traits you want in a quarterback. He isn't Flacco, nor does he get compl Oh, excuse me, he isn't, he isn't flaccid. I thought he was trying to say Flacco, but it was a typo. But he isn't flaccid, nor does he get complacent. He wants to be the best and work at that. And the fact that they didn't surround him through his rookie contract is an absolute shame. That's it. I mean, you could have sent an email that, that just said the fact that they didn't surround him through his rookie contract is an absolute shame. You could have sent an email that just said that, and that would have been perfect. But anyway, he said, but we are at the end of the bar and know no better. So what can we really say? <laughs> yeah, hey, drink, drinks on Dylan. Uh, he said, once again, uh, hopefully we are 10 and 5 Yeah, after this game. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think they should be. I think they should be, um, even with Tyler Huntley starting. But it, so much depends on what the Ravens decide to do, how they decide to play these Falcons. But, I mean, a lot of people are looking beyond just the Falcons and Steelers and Bengals and whatnot. They're just wondering about the playoffs. But game by game, I think Ravens should be able to take care of business against Atlanta. This question came from Oreo Cookie. He said, I try to be optimistic, but this does this remind you of a playoff team? Most playoff teams realize what's working and stick with it. Well, from what I saw from J.K. Dobbins, he was working and they took him away. They tried passing when they couldn't do it at all. They couldn't do it all afternoon. The defense can only bail you out so much. You can't blow a lead if you don't have one. <laughs> Tyler, uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler wouldn't throw the ball away and took unnecessary sex. I've always wanted it to snow during a game, but I couldn't even enjoy the snow because the offense is so bad. Anyway, sorry for the long email and keep it clean. Oof. Yeah, that, that's, that's just frustration, man. Mm. And he talked about they tried passing when they, they couldn't do it all afternoon. Uh, and then he, he said, well, from what he saw, J.K. Dobbins was working and they took him away. Yeah. This is what we talk about. Ravens do so much stuff to shoot themselves in the foot. And it's like, why? Eye opener. Next question came from my guy Dez. He said, What's up, Engraven? This is Dez, longtime supporting subscriber. Just let me vent, please. I'm sending this message right after that so called football game we just watched. Today was an eye opener for everyone except the staff and owner. JK had over 100 plus yards in the beginning of the third quarter and never touched the ball again. Now, I know people will say because we were down, but that speaks volumes on G Row's play calling. Snoop's first interception was a forced throw because G Row called a pass play on first down. After having the success of running the ball, today also showed what everyone in the world knows except Hobbs. Steve and EDC and that's that we lack talent at the wide receiver position bingo uh, we 
he said, can't blame the defense. They was on the field a lot. And when you hold a team to 13 points and have 100 yard rushing a third, you're supposed to win. Shaking my head. That's true. Uh, another eye opener is we finally see it's not Lamar's fault because Snoop was breaking the huddle and getting to the line with maybe eight seconds left. Again, speaks volumes on G Row. And just like every game, we got to see our delay of game flag. Uh, maybe that flag should be called Ravens. We got a Ravens. Offense, five yard penalty, automatic first down. <laughs> Lastly, when do you, as a head coach, step in and correct the issue at play calling? He can hear the plays in the headset. I guess he's just going to let the car crash without grabbing a steering wheel. Sorry for that long emotional message. Please do not apologize for speaking your thoughts and a lot of thoughts of other Ravens fans, too. Next question came from Mars Rose. Who said, Ain't Graven, it's been a while since I sent in a question, mainly because this season has not provided me with many. Instead, it's the fan base that has me really confused. When Ronnie Stanley wasn't healthy yet, fans wanted him traded. When our pass rush wasn't going off, fans went after Owe. When we lost some close games, fans went after Queen. And now when Ty speaks out against Greg Roman, fans want Harbaugh fired. I will never understand being 9-5 and five in the middle of a playoff hunt and you want to tear everything down to restart. You know who does that? Teams with nothing to lose. If we fired Roman, we could promote someone to fill in. Uh, would there be hiccups? Oh, yeah, but I can bet they wouldn't be as big as only scoring three points in a game. But why Harbaugh? It just doesn't make sense. He's historically successful. Everyone seems close with him, and he isn't the one calling the plays. He rides for his coordinators because he knows his limitations as a play caller he always has. And also, 95% of fan bases hate their coaches, so we are not unique here. Am I running with the wrong arguments, Engraven? I feel like as fans this year have been showing a lot of misdirected emotion and blame going to the wrong people. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hey, I respect what you're saying. I don't agree with it, uh, but I, I, I respect it. The reason I say I don't agree with it is because with um, – with, let's just go piece by piece because this, this, this is a fun one. Uh, when Ronnie Stanley wasn't healthy yet, fans wanted him traded. But Ronnie Stanley, um, a lot of fans are frustrated because of what his health has been and because he has such a large – he's such, so high on the, pay, on the pay scale. He's getting paid a whole, whole lot of money, and there's been issue after issue after issue after issue after issue. Um, Ronnie Stanley's a great player, phenomenal player, but that's why some fans wanted him traded. Now, we knew he wasn't going to get traded because that would have been so much dead money on a Ravens cap for years. But um, that's why fans wanted him traded because they were frustrated because the Ravens were paying somebody that just wasn't playing and wasn't available. And then he came back and got hurt and came back and got hurt. So that was with Ronnie Stanley. He said, when our pass rush wasn't going off, fans went after Owe. First round draft pick, high expectations. First round draft pick, at pass rusher two, not delivering, we're not hearing from you. That's why fans went after OA, because it, it's been quiet, especially after last year. Last year, it was so promising. Last year, had you thinking, all right, second year, oh, yeah, he's going to be more comfortable. He going off, but OA had been super quiet. When we lost some close games, fans went after Queen. Um, I think it all depends on the game. I think the Bills game, that the, uh, the Josh Allen touchdown, where it seemed like Queen like sort of over-pursued and just took a bad angle. Uh, and there were some plays where Queen missed some plays. But he made a lot of plays, too. But I think fans, um, a lot of times, the, the negative could stick out more than the positive. Especially on defense. Like defense, well, really any, any position. But defense, you could be doing the right thing all game. You could be doing the right thing all game. And then when you slip up and give up a big play, oh, yeah, all eyes on you. And people are like, oh, man, you're terrible, this, that, and the third. So that, that, that's the stuff with Patrick Queen. But he's been playing pretty good overall this season. Uh, he said, and now when Tyus speaks out against Greg Roman, fans want Harbaugh fired. Now, with the whole Greg Roman thing, Greg Roman, yeah, he got his issues. But again, Greg Roman is not the deepest issue. Everything starts, everything is approved by everything goes through Jonathan Harbaugh. Everything goes through him. He is the leader of the team. He is the head coach. He is the one that hired a Greg Roman. And, and the thing is, it, it's, it's repetitive stuff. It's stuff that we see over and over, over and over. The Ravens are 9-5. and five. That's true. That's very true. But a lot of fans are just worried that, that, that a lot of fans feel like Ravens are sort of, they, they're fool's gold. They, they, they feel like the Ravens are, are not real contenders. Now, hopefully, Ravens could turn some stuff around and be like, hey, <laughs> we got y'all. And they do that all the way to a Super Bowl. That would be great. But most people not really expecting uh, a Super Bowl out of this team. Because you see the same issues happen over and over and over. And if, say for instance, there's a kid. There's a kid uh, who just acting up all the time, over and over and over. Uh, is, uh, is it that the kid is just so bad? Or is it that something's going on with their parent? Who, who would you blame that on? Who would you, a kid being bad, who would, they, who would, would that be blamed on? Would that be the kid? Oh man, this kid's just bad. Or is the parent the one that's ultimately responsible? 
Next question came from my guy Luffy. He said, what's up, Engraven? Really quick, what do you think about the comments that Mark Andrews, John Harbaugh, and Greg Roman made in the press conference? They seemed annoyed and almost angry. I didn't watch that press conference that had Mark Andrews. I, I saw him saying some stuff that wasn't so team. Keep it clean. I guess he was just fed up. Um, probably listened to a lot of outside noise and stuff, but he just fed up. I'm sure he's frustrated, too, with how things have been going. I'm sure he's frustrated with how his year has been going. <laughs> Thank goodness he got paid already. He got his bread, but I'm sure he's frustrated about it because it's, it's been rough. It's been really rough. Um, Greg Roman, I, I think I saw some quotes that said that he said he don't listen to outside noise. I was thinking, mm, I don't believe that. I'm, I'm sure y'all be listening. Ra Ravens let it know. They let it be known that they be listening to the outside noise. Uh, anyway, he said they seemed annoyed and almost angry. For Andrews, it could, could be viewed differently because he's a player and the issues do pertain to him. But the, this this still is the team he plays for. So, of course, he would take offense. But I'm starting to think our comments are starting to touch some nerves along with live heckling at the games, which is, in my opinion, uncalled for. But uh, the truth hurts, and it's exactly what's needed so that you can correct yourself and succeed. That's true, but you still want to do it with respect. Um, but, yeah. Uh, he said, I don't want to go on too long, but I appreciate the vids you put out and giving Ravens fans a voice. Oh, no, I appreciate that. But I, I definitely think Ravens players, coaches, and stuff, they be hearing it. They, they be hearing everything that these fans be saying and whatnot. They be listening. They listen to the media. They listen to different fans and stuff. They hear it, and I, I think um, – with the frustration that is coming from fans, it's not just coming from fans, it's coming from their players too. It's coming from players too. Like, again, the whole Tyus Bowser thing, that's big, man. That's big. That ain't something you owe. We just sweep that under the rug. That's no big, no, that's a big deal. So, um, the, hopefully, they can get some stuff fixed. It's very late in the season, obviously, but. Just got to hope for the best, man. Next question came from my guy Sebastian. He said, the Browns game just shortened my lifespan by 10 years, and it sucks when your best players, JK, are taking accountability instead of your coaches. Are we really taking Lamar for granted, man? Mm. I have a little theory. What if Ravens already offer Lamar a money that's right for him, but Lamar really just doesn't like to be in this horrid offense, so he's purposely denying the offers that the Ravens made. Kind of like requesting a trade without saying it. Uh, they traded Hollywood and EDC proceeded to draft an injured linebacker, a defensive tackle, who they overhyped so much, left tackle, a cornerback, and two tight ends in the same round just for the culture. Oh, I'm going to be so upset when they finally get good receivers after Lamar is gone. Why is it always, who's going to step up and not, this guy for sure will cook? Oh. Mm. I, I never thought about it like that before. This, this, this is an interesting way to put it. He said, tired of the we control our destiny comments every post game. Love this team, but this is a Bashadi problem. Ooh, he, he took it even higher. He took it to the owner. He took it to the owner. Um, But back to your theory. What if the Ravens already offer Lamar money that's right for him, but Lamar really just doesn't like to be on his horde offense? I don't even think that's a theory. Um, I think that's a real possibility. Like... For me, I think it would be Lamar would be looking at the direction of the team, um, looking at what they've done uh, and what they haven't done um, and the direction that they could be headed in. Uh, and you could think, like, mm, I, I don't see my best success. I don't see my best attempt or my best chances for success here. Uh, I don't see this team bringing the best out of me here. Um, so, yeah, and he obviously has denied any offers that they gave to him because he ain't signed to a contract yet. Um, and as far as requesting a trade, We'll see how this offseason goes. Uh, it's going to be crazy, I'm sure. Um, but, yeah, the, the draft this year, it was an interesting draft. They did, they did get some impact. Um, some impact came sooner than later. Some impact came later than later. Uh, and there were some very interesting moves in the draft, especially around that fourth round. Fourth round, they went crazy. Um, but, yeah, man, it, it, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Um and as far as the that that who's gonna step up and not this guy for sure will cook, I I love that right there, because that that lets you know that that lets you know the status of the playmakers that you have on the team or lack thereof. Next question came from Jamie B. He said, "Hey, I hope everything is doing going well. Hey, everything's really good." Um, questions after this latest debacle against the Browns. Do you think it is T. Martin and Keith Williams' time and time to say adios to G. No Roman, the guy who's running the game, was eating the Browns alive, and then he goes to a bad passing game at the wrong time. Um, as far as T. Martin and Keith Williams. Again, it would depend on Ravens' philosophy and how much they really allowed them to do. Because that would be my only fear, man. If, if Ravens still got the same philosophy, it don't matter who the offensive coordinator is, man. They still going to be having the same, the way that they build the team, the, the, the way that they construct the roster and whatnot, then it'll be a lot of the same old stuff. But if they willing to change that and you give somebody else a shot, all right, cool. 
He said, why not just run till they stop you? Hey, because it makes too much sense. Uh, but I, almost, I must also say, EDC, this is what you get for not getting that dog wide receiver one. You need him to help and lead the other guys, and no knock on them. They're giving their all. Ravens organization, I hope you all will pay attention at your product. Sorry for the rant. Much thanks and appreciation for what you're doing, Graven, and maybe like Gino, I'm out. P.S. If Hobbs seat heats up, bye-bye, Gino. Sad, but true. That's true. Because if, uh, if Hobbs seats start getting hot, <laughs> he ain't going to be sitting up. He's going to be kicking other people uh, off the bus. Next question came from my guy Kevin B. He says, so predictable. Hey, Graven, I hope all is well. So the Ravens aren't only predictable on the, as we all can see, uh, and some already knew. When I saw that Packers cut Sammy Hammy, I was on my way to, uh, and, in, and the entire time I was saying, he's coming back. When I got off work, I saw your alert, and I knew what it was. Now let's go get OBJ uh, also because it can't get any worse Adding him can only make it better Beginning of the season we said Don't put all your eggs in the Bateman basket And boom The Ravens said Happy Easter Bateman Here's all the eggs Why not get all the wheels you can To get over the hump Instead they just stay where they are Just to make it halfway up the hill Oof That was deep right there And yeah That is, that is what we said We said it all off season Love Bateman Think he got all the potential in the world But I just I did not want the Ravens To put all their eggs in the Bateman basket And they did it and it backfired. It backfired. Um, Ravens could have been a lot more prepared uh, this season. They 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 lacked preparation uh, in at receiver and inside linebacker. They tried. They really tried. Uh, Cause again, they tried to get Bobby Wagner. They tried. It, it, it failed, but they tried. So, but at wide receiver, it's just yeah, it's yeah. Well, y'all know the story. Um, so this, I mean, this is nobody's fault, but theirs. uh, injuries did happen, which is unfortunate. Injuries change a lot, which is unfortunate, but you still could have prepared so much better than you did. It's in the draft picks. Next question came from my guy, Golden Rano. He said, Engraven, why do I believe that Lamar only has three more games to play as a Raven? You ask? I think a lot of people believe that. I think a lot of people do. But anyway, well, there's playoffs as well. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, uh, he said, well, I'll tell you, EDC gave up a second and a fifth round pick for Roquan and Smith. And quite frankly, our GM would never allow himself to miss out on spending more draft capital to select another second round defensive player instead of key game changing offensive playmakers. He will make a valiant effort to trade Lamar in hopes that re of regaining that second round pick and something much better than a fifth round pick. He could possibly get a first and second in 2023 and two more picks in 2024. My point simply stated EDC values draft picks more than his his franchise once in a generation quarterback he's clamoring for two first round picks to go with the second and third rounder he can use all those picks for defensive players mm. we're gonna see this this offseason is gonna tell so much of this story um the lamar jackson story and it could be we could be looking at the beginning of the end of lamar jackson with the ravens we hope that that doesn't happen so many signs have pointed to it being that but again it's one of them things we won't know till we know um, but I'm, I'm, I will still be just worried. I will just wonder, like, what would the Ravens do if, if they do keep Lamar? Um, are they going to change their ways as far as putting talent around them? Uh, because they could sit, they, I mean, they've already got people sold on, oh, if Lamar gets a contract, then the Ravens won't be able to put anything around them. And it's like, they already haven't put anything around them. And, and you know what's, what's crazy too? So many times when we had that conversation, um, that the Ravens haven't put much around Lamar Jackson. You know what a lot of people do? They say, no, what are you talking about? Lamar Jackson has had top 10 defenses. This year they just traded for Roquan Smith. Remember 2019, they traded for Marcus Peters. I say, oh, what? So many people, they, they automatically go to the defense. They talk about the defense. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh that, that's, that's putting around, that's defense. Lamar don't play defense? Lamar ain't no going back? And it's, it's just, it's always funny. And the last question on this episode of a question from subscribers came from my guy Vinny. He said, Mark Andrews, be ready, boost the confidence. Hey, Graven, thanks for taking the time to answer and my last, last question, question on this episode of a question from subscribers came really from my guy Vinny. He said, Mark Andrews, be ready, boost the confidence. I hope you have a great Graven, week. thanks for taking the time to answer my last question about the Ravens season. About stretch run. Be back. Really appreciate trying it. Trying to stay positive oh, when, I hope you have a great positive thing. Nine and five is a good place to be, but I'm concerned about Steelers with Huntley. Trying to stay positive when, the Mark Andrews presser really gave me a boost of confidence when he said, be ready, 
in the Falcons. It made me feel like they will figure something out and find a way to win. Mark Andrews Presser really gave me a boost of confidence when he said, be ready at the end of it. It made me feel like they will figure something out and find a way to win and get in the playoff. But I really don't. Now, a lot of that collapse. Don't want it to happen last year. A lot of it. Yeah, it was players on field. You had a lot of injured players. I mean, not really don't. Now, a lot of players that were injured. A lot of that collapse. A lot of backups on the last year. A lot of it. And guys that just had a lot of injured players. I mean, not injured players. Uh, offense and defense. Injured. So, but at the same on time, the field, um, so many guys losses that last just hadn't played in a while. Too. A lot of it was coaching. Uh, on offense Going and defense, unnecessary two But at the same time, out of decision so many losses last year. On defense, have, having guys coaching. that that would just Going were not them unnecessary as two point conversions and not out close decision making. Having them on defense, have having guys that on that just were not as talented in bad situations and not close. There was a lot of that stuff last year. Putting them on, so a lot of it was execution as well. Because yeah, yeah, you ain't have all your top guys. You putting them in bad situations. Much of it was coaching. When you have backups, last year was coaching. So a lot of it was execution as well. Because yeah, yeah, you ain't have all your top guys. Because you have less talent. of it was coaching. When you have backups, your mistakes. That's when coaching has to be. So now it's coaching. You got to do a better job. Because you have less. Up your talents, talents or that can cover up their mistakes. for your mistakes. So, but so last now year, it's coaching. Just, you got to do a yeah, better anyway, job of covering um, up your talents. He said, I don't want to have two years in a row. An eight and three collapse, then so nine and four collapse. Year, back year, to back years will be embarrassing. Yeah, but anyway, I want the Ravens um, to keep that. He tough, said, I don't want to have two years in a row. An eight and three collapse. Do they have a Super Bowl contending reputation? Back years will be embarrassing. I want the Ravens to keep that competitive reputation. Super Bowl contending. They haven't had that. Do they have a Super Bowl contending reputation? If we collapse again and miss the playoffs this year, I think they have a competitive damage the Ravens right now. Super Bowl contending. They haven't had that. It's already damaged. Um, if we um, collapse and again and miss the playoffs this year, be. I feel because that Ravens have not the been a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl contending team. It's already damaged. They've been competitive, but they um, have not been Super Bowl contenders. And if it isn't, it should be uh, for a while. Because Ravens have not. Anyway, been he said, Super "I'm trying Bowl, to stay positive, but the more negative posts and news that keeps coming out of sports but they have not been social media down the stretch here is starting to make me think that last year." Anyway, he said, "I'm trying to stay positive, but the more negative posts and news that keeps coming out of sports shows and social media down the stretch here is starting to make me think that last year." Enjoy the rest of your week. Creeps back into my mind. Oh, shout out to you. The Ravens win for us, and Lamar is back by next week. I think they will win. That can really change. The outlook of I, this I think season. they will. Enjoy the rest of your week. Definitely make the playoffs. Thank you. Well, shout out to you, Vinny. Appreciate um, it. Yeah, I, I think so I think they so will. Concern was never about I, I think the regular they will. season. And I think they'll I definitely mean, make the regular the playoffs, season. But we do see con- um, things that we concern with the Ravens, but uh, so many so much um, of our concern was never my about biggest the concern season. going into the season. I mean, the regular season. We do see things that we concern with the Ravens, but we'll see if they get there. Um, my biggest concern but going into the my season, biggest issue, right, my biggest season, concern I expect them to do was I expect playoffs. Them to be how they going to do five playoffs? What we'll are they going to do in the playoffs? Um, how do you rate them? But in the my biggest issue, that my biggest concern we'll real was. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. Ain't no chance what I mean. Shout out to Graven.